It's important to understand scope in JavaScript in order to understand what your code is doing and in order to take full advantage of all of its capabilities. In this video, we will use several examples to help illustrate scope and the scope chain and make that concept more understandable. So first, it seems important to define scope. Scope is simply a set of rules that determine where within a program you can access referenced items. Usually that refers to variables. So scope is a set of rules that determine where you're able to access the variables you have declared. Now scope isn't limited to variables, as you will see in our examples, but we usually think of variables when we're talking about scope. Let's now take a look at a few concepts that are associated with scope. Number one is scope is determined lexically. Now what does that mean? Well, that simply means that when you're writing your program, where you place declaration of variables and functions determines scope. So it has nothing to do with when a function is called or when your code is executed. Scope is determined by how you write your program. Second, JavaScript uses function scope. When a new function is declared, that creates scope. Everything in JavaScript starts in the global scope, but as you begin creating functions, that creates scope as well. And then finally, nested functions. So if you declare a function inside another function, that creates a nested function. That creates what we call a scope chain. We'll explain what a scope chain is as well. So these are the three concepts that are important to keep in mind as we go through these examples. Now let's take a look at the code that we're going to use for the examples that will help explain scope. First off, we declare a variable. We assign the number 10 to it. Then we have a function that we've referenced with add 5. Both of those are in the global space. Inside the add 5 function, we declare a variable, assign a number 5 to it. Then we log the information that it results from the number passed in plus that variable. We declare another function inside the add 5 function. In fact, we declare a second function, add 15, which is inside the add 5 function. Both of those are called and a number is passed into those functions. So now let's take a look at what scope is created as a result of this code. Here's a diagram identifying the scope that is created by the code we were just looking at. So the outermost scope I've labeled A and then the add 5 function creates scope. I've labeled that B Inside of the add5 function, we have an add10 function which creates scope. I've labeled that C. And we have an add15 function that creates scope. I've labeled that D. Now notice in the scope for B, C, and D, it does not include the definition of the function as a part of its scope. It includes the variable that is passed in. But the function actually resides in the outer scope. For example, if we take a look at C, num2 is a part of scope C, but the add10 function is a part of scope B. Now let's walk through the code and see how the scope affects what happens. So first off, the arrow is pointing to our first executable statement, which is simply defining a variable A and assigning the number 10 to it. The next executable statement is the calling of the add5 function and we pass in a number 3. So we go to the add5 function. That is where the num variable is declared. So num now equals 3 because of that value which we passed in. We then declare a variable b and assign 5 to it. Now we encounter the console.log statement. Now this console.log statement causes a lookup for the two variables, num and b. 
first searches for num inside its own scope. It finds it inside its own scope and therefore returns 3. It then searches for the variable b inside its own scope. It finds it and returns 5 and then prints out the number 8 because 3 plus 5 is 8. Now we go to the next executable statement that calls the add 10 function and it passes in a number 3. So at the add 10 function num2 is assigned a value of 3. We then go to the console.log. The system searches through its own scope, the scope for the add 10 function to find num2. It finds it and returns 3. It then searches for A. It cannot find A within scope C. So it goes to the next most outer scope. This is the scope chain that we talked about. The next most outer scope is B. It looks for the variable A within scope B. It cannot find it. So it goes further up the scope chain. It goes to the next most outer scope, which is scope A. And scope A happens to be the global scope. So the scope chain stops at the global scope. If A is not found at the global scope, then it, it is considered an undeclared variable and causes an error. However, it does find A in that scope. It returns the value and then prints out 3 plus 10, which is 13. We move to the next executable statement, which is a call to add 15, and it passes in the number 3. Num3 is declared with a value of 3. A variable C is declared and assigned a value of 15. And then the console.log statement first looks for num3. It finds it within its own scope and returns a 3. It then searches for C. It finds it within its own scope and returns a 15. Adds those two together and prints out 18. The four different scopes which we took a look at here were created by how we entered the code. Because we nested functions inside of the add5 function that created scope inside that and also created a scope chain which it could traverse to find variables when it's looking for them. Now really quick, what if we were to change a line of code? The bolded line is the code that's been changed. Instead of referring to variable A, it is now referring to variable C. So is that possible? Variable C is actually declared within scope D. Scope D is not a part of the scope chain for scope C. Therefore, an error would be produced. Basically, what would happen is it would look for the variable C within scope C. Could not find it. It goes to the next outer scope, which is B can't find it, then goes to scope A, can't find it, generates an error. All right, one more example with change code. So that line is changed back. So the variable A is being used. But down inside of function add 15, we change the console.log statement to simply call the function add 10 and pass in a number of three. Will that work? Well, when that function is called, it will look for the function inside scope D. It will not find it. It will then go to the outer scope, which is scope B. Can it find it there? Yes. The add 10 function is declared within scope B. So it finds it and executes it. Now, before finalizing this video, I like to verify everything we've talked about by executing the actual code. So let's do that now. All right, here's the actual code. It's attached to this HTML page. So when it executes, we should get 8, 13, and 18.
I will refresh that, open up the console, 8, 13, and 18. Now let's quickly make the changes which we talked about previously. If I change that variable to C, as I mentioned, we would get an error. Jump out, execute it. Sure enough, we get a reference there. C is not defined because it cannot find C in its scope chain. Let's change that back to A. And now let's call, instead of console.log, let's call add 10. Pass in a 3. So if this works, we should get 8, 13, and 13. And sure enough, that's what we get. One more comment before we leave the concept of scope. ES6, ES2015 introduced a new keyword for declaring variables, let. That creates a different scope than var. So if you do not already understand the difference between let and var, you may want to look into that as well. I hope you found that helpful. If so, like the video. Subscribe to the All Things JavaScript channel to be notified of future videos. And best of luck in your JavaScript efforts.